welcome back to this uh, second part, I guess, uh, where I'm going to just uh, take you through the next steps. Uh, the next step is to add some teeth. So the way I do it is I just add a sphere, grab a sphere, scale it down, scale it up on the Y, scale it down a bit more, get an oval-like shape, and then using the move tool and the symmetry on, just push it out to the side. And then you can come to the front, get the pinch tool, pinch brush, just pinch it. And using the move tool, we just want to get an overall tooth like shape out of this model. Now, it's still a sphere, so what we want to do is come down here to geometry and we're going to dynamesh this. Or, don't even have to dynamesh, but we're going to, yeah, we won't dynamesh, we'll just go straight to Z, Z remesh. Just tap the Z remesh tool uh, button. And this is going to make it much more evenly. Uh, place topology on it. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that your tooth is pretty much complete. I'm used to using the trim dynamic. Pretty much complete before you start duplicating and rotating and putting in the place. Because you don't want to have to detail a hundred teeth if you could just detail one tooth and uh, duplicate it over and over and over again. So, there we go. The pinch tool. Just pinch the front of it. The back of it. Trim dynamic. Just trim it down on the sides. Like so. Oop. Just get my working. We should have a little arch for the tooth in here. There we are. Let me just move a little bit on the sides. I'm going to grab Gizmo, just scale it out a bit. Now, let's say this is our tooth. What we can do now is, I just want to actually get a sharper corner on those. So I'm just going to use a higher polish, H polish tool. I'm just going to polish this tooth up so it's nice and sharp as it goes to the end. Just smooth out a little bit. There we go, that's better. Um, so you're using move tool, like move tool in the gizmo, turn off X, turn off X for um, symmetry. And we're just going to scale it down. Now there's going to be a lot of these teeth, so you know, just take your time. What I like to do is I like to put them in the put the top one first in the middle, and then I'll place it where I want them. And then duplicate that one and rotate it so it's the other way up and put this one on the bottom. Now the bottom teeth are going to be slightly smaller than the top teeth. This guy. And I kind of want him to go in an arrow towards a point in the middle. The front teeth can be a little bit more up. There we are. Now I'm just going to do now is just duplicate over and over again until I have filled out this mouth. So I'll return once I have filled out all these teeth in this guy's head and be right back.
go. So, once you've got all your teeth lined out <coughs> the way you want them, one well, the next thing I do is I just push the two middle teeth on the top and the bottom jaw to the very top of the subtools section so that I can come back down and merge every single one of these small other teeth together. There we go. And then using Z plugin, I can mirror it over to the other side. Now, the reason I pulled the two teeth in the middle so that they were different was so I can get a little bit of asymmetry going on with the middle teeth rather than having them exactly the same on both sides. So I'm just gonna quickly move these two teeth here. Yeah, middle ones I might just make it look like they're going toward each other like that. And there we are. He now has his teeth. Now what I can do is I come in with a damn standard and I can quickly mask out some or build out some gums. Actually, yeah, some gum areas around here, just drawing in some sort of shape there for later. And the same thing along the bottom jaw. There we are. Now uh, we've left a big hole in his mouth there because we're going to put a, uh, quite a big tongue coming out of his mouth uh, a, little, a little later. So that'll be quite cool. One of these teeth in the front, I'll just rotate slightly out. Actually, I'll do it with both. There we go. There we are. So, next thing you do, get back on the body and continue defining it. Now that we have the teeth in, it looks a lot more scarier. So we got. So we can just come back onto the body and define these shapes a bit more. Gonna cut in here. Just going to define it a little bit more until we and, and then move on to uh, more detailed sections. together nice and now. I'm just gonna do a little bit of fix up here. I'm gonna move this collarbone up and out. There we go. Just keep refining some shapes wherever you want.
Here we go. Just gonna build up some of that inner mouth sections. Down, I'm just going to cut in some shapes. Clay build up. working some of these more interesting shapes on the head or we'll trying to find some more interesting shapes on the head So, we are almost ready, I'm just going to define this, this uh, jaw a little bit more. standard. I'm just going to cut in here, separate these two pieces. Like that. I'll add the eyes in a little later for this character. Right now I just want to Make sure the rest of it is good to go. Cool. Now, let's put a tongue in his face. Or his mouth. His face. His mouth. Uh, same rule apply. Grab a sphere. Select the sphere. Position the sphere. Scale down the sphere. And then I use the snake hook brush to bring out the tongue, extrudes the tongue out the front. Hopefully it's the front. Nope, we don't have symmetry on. Make sure symmetry is on. And then extrude the tongue, like so. Don't worry, it looks ugly because we're going to go to Dynamesh and we're just going to Dynamesh this tongue. Low resolution is, pretty good, is, is good we don't want a high resolution just yet and you can smooth it to scale it down use a move brush to move this tongue into shape now this is kind of toxin's defining feature I'd say apart from his two-tone color on his body but because we're not going to have the rest of his body we need to make sure his tongue is recognizable as his own so a lot of tongue for this character I'm gonna use a spiral 
brush and try and get some of that curvature back into the tongue. Need to be a bit careful with this brush. Too much. There's no easy way of doing this. It's just a, a lot of back and forth until you get the curve you want. Looks like I've done it with symmetry off, so I might need to come in here, modify, and mirror to the other side, and then Z dynamesh it. Add a little bit more geometry for this time because it's a smaller model. Dynamesh it, that'll do. And I'm going to leave it for now as symmetrical, but once I pose it, I will push it to the side, push it out to the side so that it's not uh, symmetrical anymore. It's a spiral tool again, just for the end of this tongue. There we go. Now that I'm happy with the shape, come in here and add some more resolution onto it first. And you can then build up using the damn stand, you can make these side parts stick out a bit more if you want. Like that. Solo it. Continue it on. Use the clay builder. Just taper it a bit. On the underside. Like that. Use damp stand. You can then, in the middle, just the big, at the, but near the back of the, of the tongue, just do a bit of a parting in there and then build it up slowly with a brush, a uh, clay build up brush. This makes it look more interesting. There we are. Now some people might thought his tongue's a bit too big. Some might say it's not big enough. I'm going to just scale it down a little bit so it doesn't look silly. Because although it's a cartoon or comic book character, you still want him to look kind of menacing. So just remember who your audience is for this sort of stuff. Really? <clears throat> and then you can't go wrong. So, yes. That jaw out a bit on the bottom here. There we go, that will do. So, we have nearly everything we need. Uh, there's a few little things here and there that you can see in the reference, like the stuff on his back, which is uh, sort of growing out of his back here, I guess. Um, now, I'm deciding whether or not to actually do that for my model. Uh, probably will benefit to do it because it's part of his character I guess um, so we might have to just do it be a bit time consuming but we have already got most of the model done so you know add those extra little details really help it stand out A bit more, so I'm gonna go in here, sub tool. And I'm wondering, should I just copy a tooth or no, we'll pen a new tool? Um, a cylinder, elongate the cylinder, and what we'll do now 
is using the pinch tool and uh, turning geometry over to Dynamesh. The low resolution, ooh, too low resolution, uh, a low enough resolution. Oh. Just going to smooth it out until it becomes quite thin. And then using spiral tool, hopefully this will work. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. Might have a bit too much influence on it. But you can get a... Good wavy form going if you go it in the right place. That'll do for that. And then all, the, all it is, is duplicating and moving around the body and rotating and changing. So what I'll do, I'll quickly do this. I'll just duplicate it um, on one side and then mirror it over to the other side and then I should be done. So I'll return in a minute. Now I'm going to just uh, merge all these down and then I'll mirror it over to the other side as one piece. And before I merge it to the main body, I'm just going to do some quick sculpting so it doesn't look all look the same on either side. Pinch on. I want to use the inflate tool brush just inflate the bases of this so that I can sculpt it have it look like it's coming out of the body there we are and then spiral brush Just gonna change a few of these, a couple of these up a little bit. I'm gonna worry, I'll be coming back and changing them and fixing them later. And now we can merge that with the body. So we merge down. These will automatically, hopefully, automatically become dynameshed. Yep, to the body. And uh, we can now come in here, clay build up brush, and we set the brush uh, auto masking, and back face masking on, so that if we sculpt on this side, it's not going to affect the other side. And that's what we usually do with uh, 
models that are very thin really you don't want to be sculpting on the other side and then messing it up so it's just a little way little trick to help you with those thin pieces of geometry that you'll have on your model sometimes so I'm just incorporating that to the body I'm using the, the a smooth tool a bit as well just to smooth out them harsh corners and so it doesn't look like I just stuck it on top side here Neatness comes later. Right now, just have fun with it until you're ready to go further. There we go. Now, if you want, you can now go into asymmetrical mode and change some of the directions of these. little symbiotic streams if you want but I'm going to leave it for now and once I've re topped it then I'll put some asymmetry on some of these guys there we go hopefully he's now looking a bit more like toxin and a little less like Venom. We can actually incorporate this one into the side here. Now if you're getting this little mess up here, it's because we have the base the uh, back face culling on. If we turn that off then it will hopefully help fix that issue. There we are. Now we can get on to me. Uh, get on to um, re z remeshing it and get it ready for final detailing. But uh, like I said, the 90% of this job has been done inside of Dynamesh, and that's typically how I like to do it. I don't like to commit too much, too soon, or too fast. I like to take my time in Dynamesh, playing with playing with the clay, the virtual clay, until I'm happy with the way the model's looking. So, if we now look at it, we can come into subtools. This is going to be the Z remesh inside. Uh, I've been asked a lot since well, what time, at what point do you actually go into Z remesh uh, and, and and stop using Dynamesh, and it will be at this sort of stage where I no longer feel like I, I need to refine the shapes and stuff anymore, and I just want to get in there with some detailing. This will be the point where I will take it away from. Uh, being a Dynamesh model and, and Z remeshing it. Now I don't typically retopo uh, my models from on YouTube. <clears throat> I don't typically retopo them cor uh, to correct topology. I tend to just let Z remesh do its job, and it does quite a good job um, at Z remeshing, uh, especially if you you know if it's going to be a concept. It doesn't have to be perfect topology. It just needs to have something on there. That will help you, you know, pose it and 
and take it in, maybe take it into Substance Painter later on and, and paint it uh, to a higher standard. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll turn off DynaMesh, go on a Z Remesh, bump this up to a 15, depending on the size of the model. If it's a if it's a full head to toe model, you're looking at 15 to 20 target poly count. If it's just a bust, like the neck from the neck up, you're looking at about 10 to 5. It'll be fine for that. And then I'm going to just simply hit the Z remesh and see what happens. And that's, uh, that's our low poly, but I actually have forgotten to take a step in in my work and I've forgotten to actually duplicate this model. So I'm just going to undo what I did and hit the duplicate button. I'm going to bring both of these to the very top of the pile. And I'm going to remesh, Z remesh the second one. Now we know how it looks, so I'm just going to hit the button and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so now it's done. You'll see we have a high poly version of our model and a low poly version of our model. The low poly version, version is underneath the high poly and that's where we want it. Uh, I'm just going to turn off everything apart from these two models so we can see what happens. So I need to now bring all that detail from the high poly onto my low poly which has got a better topology on it. So what I'll do is I will, uh, starting off at the lowest subdivision level, which is zero, I will project, and this should do be quick, pretty quick, uh, and then hit control D to subdivide it once, then hit project, and I'll keep doing this until I get to level five. You, it's normally about level five that I, I can get to uh, with my machine. Uh, that's around 10 million polygons. Um, so takes a little while and you know you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna take a while to do all this projecting uh, so what I'll do is I'll come back when it's done and uh, we can have a look at the, the different subdivision levels uh, of this character and we are back uh, <clears throat> so after projecting I have now got my uh, character at level 5 subdivision and he's roughly at 10 million polygons uh, what you can do now is you can you can turn off your high high resolution model or the dynamesh model and just have a look at the final results from that projection. Now then, in some cases you are going to need to come in and clean up the model uh, once projection is over. In other cases, it will actually project pretty well. So. It'll be a little bit of cleanup, but not a lot of cleanup. Uh, and as for this model, as you can see, we've got little to no cleanup to do. Um, there's more detailing to do, but there's definitely no cleanup to do. So we can now come in here and again just work some of these shapes back in. And you can see, even without the soft brush or the smooth brush, I'm getting some really nice line work on this model coming out. Uh, so it's, it's really good to take a step back from the smooth brush when you can. Uh, let's have a look. So if we turn everything else on again, if we hit shift in the eyeball, it should turn everything else on. Now we don't need the uh, dynameshed version at the top anymore. So we can actually delete that and that will get rid of uh, polygons that are in the scene, which is helpful. Um, and uh, don't forget to save your save your scene as regularly as you can. So I'm just going to do that now and I'll be back in one second. All right, cool. So what do we have here? We have a tongue. I believe the tongue is not Z remeshed yet either. Nope. Uh, so what we can do is we can Z remesh that as well. Uh, the teeth, I'm just going to merge the teeth all together so that they're all one model. So if I come down to merge, 
Let's go merge down. Always okay. There we go. So they are they're all one piece. It'll make it easier for us to select them later on. Cool. So for the tongue, let's duplicate the tongue, hide the rest. And I'm just gonna Z remesh this one as well. This one shouldn't take too long because it's quite a small model. Just going to turn off uh, Z. I'm just going to turn off the X axes because it's actually it's not symmetrical. There we are. And I'm going to turn on the high res model, and I'm going to project all. Hit the control D to subdivide, project all. Hit control D to subdivide, project all again. And just keep going till I get to 1 million, will be fine. Again, polygon count doesn't really matter when you're doing a conceptual piece um, because, especially when you do it using Photoshop, I'm just going to delete that tongue because we don't need it anymore. Especially when you're compositing in Photoshop, uh, poly count really doesn't matter too much. Uh, it only really matters when you come to game design or film design, the, your characters, the final pieces. So let's have a look at the body again. So select the body. Now what we can do is we can just come in here and touch up these areas. Now I can even use the standard brush start adding some line work onto the muscles like stra strands and the flow of the direction of the muscle that is going just to break up that flatness to it Again, I'm not going to worry too much about the forearms because we're going to composite it later. I did say, I did mention that I was going to do the stomach slightly asymmetrical, so coming in with the Clay build up just with X turned off. I'm just gonna define some of these muscles on his stomach a little bit more in an asymmetrical way so it looks like it's building on top of each other rather than just a one massive line in the middle and no formation of muscles on it. That's all you gotta do, just a little bit of difference in the model helps it out quite a lot. And you can come back in here with the damn standard and cut in a little bit of line work. Oop, too heavy. Just cut in a little bit of line work just to show where that muscle is. in the symmetrical button again you can just come in and do some more symmetry on it there we are that's that's it that's all you had to do just to get a little bit of difference in the muscles in the middle Change it up a bit. So 
It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference later on. To the damn stone, I'm just gonna define some of this creasing going on where the muscles are joined. Emphasize these kind of strands. Again, turning off asymmetry and just coming in here and changing up it the middle so it's not all symmetrical. Perfect. Like so. Turning back on symmetry. Just gonna add some line work on the muscles. Not too much, just a little bit. Now come to the face and get some of this. gums going on, some gum work. Same down here. Then using the standard brush, I'm just gonna do some Overlap here. Like so. Now, let's have a look at these eyes that he's got. Um, actually, before we do that, we'll, we'll just carry on detailing some of the body for now. Uh, we'll leave the eyes until maybe a little later. Tackle the eyes later. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the back area because we're not going to see it too much. So, just a few lines. Standard brush, bump up the intensity a bit more. Now I'm just going to come in here and do some line work. Oh, it's not the standard brush. There we go.
me up. Go around the whole model and work work it in. Work in that detail you want in there. Now, now we should have a look at those eyes a bit, see what we can do about them. So, coming over to the eyes, and let's see what is Toxin eyes look like. They are okay. Yep, yeah, they have a little bit of shape to them. So what we'll do is we'll mask it out first with a mask tool. Just mask out a rough shape of the eyes. Sharpen that with a control alt and tap on the model until you can sharpen until you sharpen the mask. Just gonna emphasize this piece in the middle a bit more. And on the side. Again, and hit the invert for that. And what we can do is using the move tool, we can just move those in. Yeah, just move them in slightly. Hit the unmask it come back around with the smooth brush and just smooth those edges in so we get a little bit of an indent and we can now come in here and just pull this front part out a bit more like so and using the clay brush we can go around the edges of our silhouette, of our shape, sorry, and just build up some clay around it, like so. Use the invert of it to take it out. It gives it a nice, soft, organic look to it, not as harsh as the clay build up. either. And then using damn standard. Just gonna come in here and start messing with the design a bit. So just cutting in like 
so. Use a trim dynamic and just trim out that top bit. Come back in with a stand brush. Just do some wrinkles to fill it out. And then a damn standard, I'm just gonna stand at this mouth area and using the standard brush I will create a lip type effect Just go around the eyes a bit more. And then inside those, I want to mask out another eye shape. And this will be the white area. Maybe, will it? Mm. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can always undo it. Gonna invert it, move it down inwards again, and then I'm gonna, using the soft smooth brush, just smooth out those edges a bit. a bit, but barely visible. And then just come in, damn standard, and cut in again. Standard brush. Just gonna incorporate this into the model.
Now if you start seeing some stretching of the topology, it's okay. Uh, the reason I go to level 5 of my work is sometimes it's enough and sometimes it's not enough, but what I'll do is I'll near the end I'll just subdivide it again and it should give me that extra bit of topology to smooth out the model and not have too much stretching going on on the model. Size down a bit. There we go. That will do for the eyes for now. I might just come in here and give us a bit of a height to it. A roundness, that would be that's better. That's much better. There we are. Just to define this back area a little bit. Totally up to you how much you want to play around with the detailing of this side of this this point because we've already done all the hard work. Uh, now it's just a bit of final touch-ups here and there. The longer you spend, the more you'll get out of it. So, when we return, I will show you how I do the extra fine details around the rest of the body and then we will have it ready for texturing, rendering and Photoshop. So, see you in the next section. <laughs>